Hello ladies and gentlemen, today's is going to be a kind of a coding challenge. I've got my XAMPP control panel here and I have the web server. There's the space in which I can actually write some documents and I'm going to take an exercise in PHP, write a system that registers a user to a website and we'll talk about uh, how that works. The tutorial I'm following was intended for a different setup and so in following it we're going to find out what needs to be changed and get to understand a little more how to set up a web server and what there is in the administration of the database and so on. So I've got the tutorial here. This sort of problem would also apply if you find a tutorial online that explains how to do something and there is a method in how to follow a tutorial when you know that it will use information that doesn't correspond to what you are doing. First pre-read the whole thing to get an idea where it's taking us so that we can anticipate so that when it says do this we know to do that instead. Right okay so it says it's going to help us create a registration page and it starts by telling us to add a database and the database is on something at an address which is Shoe AC UK which is the university where I work. But actually in the lockdown it's very difficult to use that database while working from home. We need to use a MySQL database but not this one which means that I don't need to log in like this and we need to use PHP my admin but not at this address. Where's XAMPP? XAMPP. There's my control panel on my home computer and I'm going to use PHP my admin but from the administration of my SQL that I've got here in the panel if I click on this button it will take me to the PHP my admin of my own uh, system. The address is localhost something or other and my system has got a security or a secure HTTP that is causing it to complain. It's my home computer and all that kind of things. There isn't really a risk but I want to administer PHP my admin. Come on there. So this is my server on my computer running my own databases. Uh, not the one at this address. If you were using again a different web server, one from a free registration online, these sorts of details would change again, especially the address of your web server would not be local host, it would be at wherever you're getting your hosting from. Okay, it's telling us how to log in again, but it will be different from us. And then it says go to SQL, so in that database administration, I guess, and create this table okay or rather it says run this sql query with the sql query i can see what it's doing it creates a table called users with a series of columns user id first name last name email pass which i guess is a password reg date the date of registration user id is the primary key of this table email has to be unique okay I can see where that is going. We'll do that in a short while. I want to pre-read the whole thing first. Uh, then th there will be a number of files to download and organize and move to the right place. That isn't a difficult thing to do. Well, let's have a quick look at what those files are. There is uh, some style sheets, some JavaScript, jQuery, classic kind of things then. Uh, include ah, a header and a footer to put in an include file so that if we have multiple web pages they all have the same header and the same footer. Some images. I might skip some to be able to home in to the registration. Then once all of this is done connect.db so another file also in includes which has information about a database user, a database password, a database host and a database name. Those depend on what server you have, what database you have and how they are connected to each other. DB host I recognize localhost there but the database name 
Well, I suppose when I create my database, it will have a name. When I find out who I am in that database, what my username in that database is, and my, what my password is, that will resolve these three. Okay, and it, the file gets saved. Of course it does. Right, putting in the header and the footer, that's exactly the sort of thing that I might skip. And headings and all sorts of nice things like that. And finally, create a user registration. The basic idea of how it works to register a user on a website and to allow them to log in goes something like this. And it's something I can doodle with. Your user is sitting happy at their computer. And here is the timeline of what they are doing, okay? And they want to register. So they are looking at the registration page that will represent here with a little uh, rectangle. And while they are thinking about this, so this is the user. While they are thinking about this, they fill in their form. That takes a little bit of time on the timeline that we have drawn there. And then they submit it. And when they submit it, the information is sent out, sent out to something or other. To a web server. When the web server, so this is the timeline of the, what the web server is doing. The web server waits 99% of the time to receive requests, especially my web server at home on my own computer, where it only receives requests from me anyway. Obviously, the web servers of large companies keep receiving requests all the time, so they must be busy. But my personal one is not. Web server is here. Oh, it's local host for me. And when it receives a request, it wakes up. It has to pick up the form data. Oh, this is an ugly rectangle. Can I draw that better, do you think? Am I patient enough to get a rectangle from here, do you think? Oh, this is so much better. It has to pick up the form data Then, add a user and a password, well, not just that, the other information as well, so... Add that data to the user's list. We saw that user table that was going to be created, so to that user's table. And finally, it confirms that everything is okay. That confirmation is important because it is the information that goes back. Here, now that I started to use little lines and things like that, let's uh, continue making it look good. So that information goes back to the user. in the form of a web page that the user can look at. So then the user again sits at their computer and see a reply that says something like, you are registered, thank you very much, everything is hunky-dory. I didn't say very much about what happens here, especially not surely the information here. We say it adds the data to the user's list, to the user's table, but where and how? Something more is happening here. 
which is that when the system picks up the form data to add it to the user's table, it communicates to a third process, as we call it, to a third thing that is running in my computer, which is, again, let's make these lines neat this time. which is a database. So it actually sends information to the database so that the database can add data to the user. And the database goes back and says, done it, I've added the user's name. Oh, I'm not very clever at using the mouse as a drawing pad, am I? That information exchanged between a web server and the database, it takes the form of a an SQL query. Database use SQL, you know. And here I can see the database is also running a little bit of a process while the web server is waiting. Something to do with inserting a row of data in the users table. And it will return with a confirmation, say, yeah, done. Or I suppose if something is wrong, like if the user is using the same uh, email as another user it will complain uh, or if that username already exists or that sort of thing but uh, you know let's uh, get to understand what it is like when it is normal and then we'll try and see what happens how we can catch the problem if there is a if if things go wrong that's the overall idea about how this will get organized. By the way, those kinds of diagrams, they are called process diagrams. They are incredibly useful to understand what goes on when you've got three, four, five, six separate parts of a computer system that are being coordinated. So there's my timeline from top to bottom. There's the different parts of my computer system, the different separate processes that have to coordinate. Uh, and I can see in the form of arrows, the information that has to go backwards and forwards from one thing to another. So let's put that aside. And now that we understand that process is working out, we can take a look at how it is being implemented in there. So my user fills in the form and when they do, there's this page register.php that will pick up all the form information check it and there's plenty of checking so first of all we check that the uh, information has been sent using the post method and then we will connect to the database and we check that they have thought of filling their username that would be a bit silly if not. We then check that they have thought of filling in their password and that their, their two passwords are okay. We check that the email address isn't already in use. And finally, if the password's okay, the username is okay, the, the email address is, uh, uh, is, is acceptable. We run this query, insert into users, first name, last name, email, password, registration, date, a series of values for FNLNE Shawan P. We'll see what Shawan is in a sec. Now, which I guess is the current date. Run the query and hopefully if everything goes well, it will say registered, you are now registered. Simples. Uh, what was FN, LN, E, and uh, what's SHA1 anyway? Uh, step back for a sec. 
they are they start with dollars so they are variables fn must be yes if there is a first name then make fn the first name let's keep going if the password if password 1 and password 2 are the same then make dollar p the password so fn is the first name p is the password did i skip over the email bit is the email where is the email being picked up i didn't see a dollar post email or anything like that or did i miss that out yeah, if the method is post connect to the database start the list of possible errors which starts empty check the first time fn the first name will be fn yes it's not written in code but same with email for uh, with dollar e for email and same with uh, with dollar ln for last name passwords one and two have to be the same p will be my password and e is my email and we check that that email doesn't already exist in the database finally if empty errors that is you know we made this list of errors at the beginning and it was going to be empty by default if no errors have been added in lists that means that the user have typed in their first name their last name their password their email their email is unique the password one and two are the same all of those sorts of things if it passes all of those tests then we insert the data fn is the first name ln is the last name e is the email p is the password i want to do a little bit of a test to understand what that sha1 thing is and finally it will say registered if we have this code in place the registration is going to work nicely okay now i need to set the database up because we've talked about all this we said we would actually anticipate a little oh i did not say what there is later in the tutorial let's jump forward yeah there's a conclusion and a list of the uh, we display the list of the errors if there is a problem and we say please try again of course and we close the connection to the database at the very uh, at, at the very end once we will have put all of this into place then we'll be able to actually test our registration page oh it will look a little uglier than this it's not too difficult to set to set up then there is the task to create a create a page contact us which again uses a form so that at the end the information from the form is being emailed to an email address chosen by the website owner uh, and insert it here now let's go back and now that we have understood all this actually get it done we said the database is a different one it's not the one given at the address so at the address here but still i need to administer my system and add the database into it and create the correct uh, the, the correct table so let's go to the browser and see what databases can be created and about setting one up there are various things there but i'm going to create a new database i've got the option to create one here i'm going to call it php challenge database has been created tells me the machine tells me right lovely okay and i can create some new tables and i have an sql tab that i can use so i'm going to create that table with users and this sort of things i could do it here going to the structure typing create the table here choosing my columns and so on so there is a manual way to do it 
But actually, since I've been kindly given an SQL query that will create the correct database table, I'm going to follow that query. Uh, let's uh, read through it again. So it will create a table called users. It checks if the table doesn't exist already. The table doesn't exist already. With user ID, first name, last name, email, and password, and those types. So uh, user ID is a number, and it will increment automatically. Fantastic. First name, last name, and email are text. Password is characters. Yes, of course. Uh, registration date will be a date of course must none of these things must ever be null and finally user ID is the primary key and email is unique All right I can see what sort of things this will do there's a go button over here press go done apparently empty result set can I see my database All right my database has one table press users and my table has no data in it there's my table no data in it at all I think I'm going to try to insert a fake user in there uh, let's see if I can add a user to this uh, to, to this table the query we read that says insert into users Let's see if I can exploit something like that. I need to copy that, I guess, from the opening quote to the closing quote. And that would be a query for inserting, for inserting data. Oh, I can't see a thing. Let's uh, enlarge this a little. And also insert into users something or other. And then a new line here. Right, okay, values, something or other. But it's not FN I want. Uh, let's have a user called Toto. Yeah, I know. Some people must have better names than that, I hope. Uh, and last name? Well, okay. I have very little imagination. Uh, quote. E. Oh, E was the email. Toto at Toto dot com. Shawan pay. Shawan? Shall I leave Shawan and we'll, we can always see what happens. P. Uh, their password will be secret. Oh, which of these things is the... No, people register with their email. Uh, and date will be now. Yeah, okay, okay, I get it. And where is the go button? Oh, I enlarged this, so the go button has hidden. It's over there. Or is it? Yes, it is. There. One row inserted. Victory! We have a user's database with a user in it. Uh, or, wait, wait. So I say victory, but maybe I shouldn't say that too soon. We, yes. First name Toto, last name Toto, email toto.com. Password. Wasn't my password secret? Ah. Password is sha one bracket secret see this that's nice if someone hacked my system and got hold of the database they wouldn't be able to uh, to find out what the password is they they are able to find out the names and email addresses of my uh, of my users though that's what sha one was it's encryption it encrypts the password to make sure that it is held securely and the registration that you got automatically set up and the user ID got automatically set up. So every new user will have number one, number two, number three, and so on. Okay, now I'm starting to get an idea how this thing will, uh, w will work out. 
We've done some of the early things that are in there. Let's see. Got a database. Uh, I have got a, a user table set up. We need to download those files and organize them. Let's see what have we got. There's a series of files in sections called CSS and JS and includes and the images, I think, as well. I want to home in to the result as quick as I possibly can. And so I'm going to attempt to not download all of the files, but just focus on the ones that actually matter. And if later I realize that some files would have been needed, I can actually uh, add them in. Uh, but to start with, I'm in htdocs here so that I can actually have a neat uh, a new set of uh, uh, new set of files. I'm going to create a folder in there and I'm going to call it PHP challenge. And we're going to put all of the files in there. It said that we need a CSS folder. CSS and we need a JavaScript one but I can see where, where we're going with this CSS is going to make it look much better but right now I said that home in straight to the more interesting things so if it doesn't look good I don't mind too much not to start with anyway uh, then JS contains jQuery foundation which is uh, uh, the comment ça s'appelle Bootstrap. Foundation, which is the bootstrap uh, 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 CSS system, which is foundation, which is part of the bootstrap uh, CSS framework. So again, it's to make this whole thing look good. App and what input, which I also intended to make this whole thing look good. Uh, uh, look look nicer and the header and footer for things like navigation anything that appears at the bottom of the page and top of the page and so on and uh, I can also uh, probably do that later and then any image that will be so much nicer with images but if I've got a little uh, empty thing where an image should be at least to start with uh, I'll be uh, uh, I, I'll, I'll be happy. Let's focus on getting the functionality up and then we'll make it look good. Uh, connecting to the database. Get the file connect DB. Now this one will matter because to get my functionality I do need the database connection. So connect db is this file. Let's uh, save that. Open. No, I'm going to save as and save it into my PHP challenge. In fact, save it in an include folder in my PHP challenge. Those subfolders we could do without, but file management quickly becomes very painful when you have 15, 20, 200 files for different things. So to have your files organized as separate style sheets, JavaScript, include images and so on, that really helps. 
Okay, so copy that because we are going to save this file. No, it has saved it in there. Move it to my include folder. And in fact, it got the wrong name because I had downloaded it before as I was testing this work. So make sure to call it connect db, not connect db1. Of course, if I call it connect db1, it would still work. But I'd need to rename all the places where I refer to it and so on. Let's see if I can open this. Open with edit with notepad. Connect db1, there it is. What's in there? Database password. Uh, database, no, user password. Host is localhost. Database's name, need to name the database correctly. MySQL I connect or die. So this, I like to write it a little differently like this it's clearer what goes on this will connect to the database uh, and if something doesn't work out die will cause the page to stop and display some kind of error message so that we know what is going wrong uh, and set car set is important if the character set of your usernames, passwords, and so on, uh, uh, has it follows a, follows a standard. UTF-8 is a standard that is used very widely now. So standard things that we do every time that we connect to a database, and for that reason, we have actually got that information saved into a separate uh, into a separate file. Let's go back to this username, password, host. I know host is correct. Database is name. I created a database not long ago. What did I call it? I called it, ha, ha PHP challenge, I called it. So I've got my database name. PHP challenge. And I do I have a username and do I have a password? Where do I find that information? Privilege I think privileges. The privileges of a database are the the setup that tells me who has what rights to do what. I can see there is a username root on the host. 127 yeah. also a username root on the host localhost that has all privileges I don't remember typing password at any moment it might be that my username root doesn't have a password I wonder if that's a very safe thing to do to have a username root without if that has privileges to everything on my database and no password but but if that is right, then I could use dbuser root. And where's the password? There. And password, nothing at all. An empty string, you know, quote, unquote, with nothing in between. And that, that would be it. Apparently, that would be it. Uh, I wonder if I can... Where's the end of the PHP thing there? I wonder if I can run this connect db without actually um, without doing any any more work. Well, I suppose uh, the worst that can happen is there'll be an error. HTTP colon slash slash local host. Right, where's this file? Because also, it's the HTTPS, HTTPS, colon slash slash localhost. It's PHP challenge. 
Is that higher road PHP challenge? Yeah, and this PHP challenge, and then inside that include, and then inside that connect db.php. <laughs> include slash connect db db not bd dot php and and there's uh, something no such host is known no such host is known php network get addresses get that other info fail no such host is known is that the is that the local host that is not known okay the good news and bad news the good news is that i loaded my connect.php page i wonder if i can um here uh echo connected a OK. If something goes wrong with the connection, then it will stop here. But if it connects, then I will get I will read this. Let's do a reload. But I think it stopped and what we read was some sort of connect error, because that's the only source of some possible problem. Ah, I made a typo here. That's where the error is coming from. I call this PHP challenge, but the, the host was local hosts. The host is the name of the server. And it's the database's name that was PHP challenge. Local host. Right, it's nice to still, I'll keep the connected AOK -okay and we'll see what actually happens when we load this page. Okay, reload this and fingers crossed. Access denied using password, no. Right, okay, so probably there is a security for the root user and I used the wrong password. So we're still not connected, but but we've got a better idea what is happening. Uh, add user account, edit privileges, right, okay, root, localhost. If I do edit privileges, will I know something of the password that's used for that root? User account root at localhost. Yeah, that's all the press privileges they have, fair enough. Maybe I'm going to use a different password altogether so that I don't mess up with my database and all the, and all that. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a user especially so that this database uh, has got a, a, a user for it. Add user account, it says. We're going to create a user PHP challenge for the database PHP challenge. Username PHP challenge host name any host. Nah, I think I'll put local host. I'm not getting too paranoid here because I'm inside my own computer with my own server, which doesn't run a lot of the time, and I'm at home and there is a firewall. But the more restrictive we get about what a user is allowed to do, so the user PHP challenge is only allowed to connect via localhost, and we'll put in a password. Password. Challenge PHP. Retype the password. Challenge PHP. You'll remind me online if I forget what the password is. 
native MySQL authentication. Yeah, I'm sure that is right. Generate a password. No, I don't want to generate a password. It will generate something horrible that I'll never remember and I'll need to write down. So the weakness of the password is also strength in the sense that I don't need to have it written down elsewhere. And what is that user what database grant all privileges on database PHP challenge? Oh, that's nice that we've got ticked there. Global privileges? No, no. This is a user who will have the privilege to use the PHP challenge database. So the PHP challenge user will use the PHP challenge database and his password will be challenge PHP. Right. Is there a go button in there? Yes, at the very end, of course it is. Do I want the machine to remember this? No. Yeah, there is a new user, a new database user. Yes, of course. And now we insert this information in here. So the database name is PHP challenge. The database user is PHP challenge. And the password is challenge PHP and save that and return to localhost and drum roll and reload this thing yes we got connected so uh, uh, I want to return to this thing. I, I did connect today okay to find out whether the connection worked. But the connection has worked now. So we're all right, really. If the connection has worked, then everything else actually works to the system that was uh, uh, th that was given. But I'm going to continue bending the tutorial, skipping all the things that are not interesting. Well, they are interesting. Skipping all the things that are not interesting yet and focusing just on the functionality. Can I have a registration that inserts a user? The reason why I want to do this is because instead of following the tutorial, I want to show you to use the tutorial to think. We have connected to the database. We have tested the connection to the database. Adding header and footer. Right, I don't care about the header and I don't care about the footer. I will do it later. I'm interested in getting the connection working. There is a file register.php register.php which is here. Download that. Move that over. Oh yeah, save. Of course I've done it before. Move that over. Uh, not in the includes, not in the includes in PHP challenge. So the main pages of a site go straight in the in, in the directory for the site and subparts, things like CSS, includes JavaScript and so on, go in folders within. Well that's one way of organizing those things. Let's open this in PHP, uh, no, in Notepad Plus Plus and watch what there is. Okay, add PHP code here, yes of course, and then add footer here. Yeah, we'll leave that in there. Uh, I'm going to put that as an HTML comment because this really is an HTML page or part of one anyway. Same thing here. Uh, why has that not, not uh, turned green? Sorry, one space too many. There. So the HTML command turn green, or at least in my in my thing here. And so what we've got is a form that says create an account, and then it has an input for 
the first name, the last name, the email, passwords one and two, and a button to press to register. And here there's a little bit of PHP. If is set first name, echo first name. So I think the idea of this if is if someone has already pressed, has already partly filled the form or has already filled the form, then the pre-filled information will actually, uh, will, will actually go in there. Uh, a bit like the connection, I'm going to actually attempt to look at whether this is working, even though we're nowhere near what needs to be done. But I don't care, I'm going to load the page anyway. The worst that can happen is I'll get an error message. Registration.php. I think that's what it was called. Or was it register? <laughs> it's register. Yes. Okay, first name, last name, email address, password, confirm password, register. This is all looking very ugly, but remember I didn't load Bootstrap and all the JavaScript and all of those sorts of things, all the footer, header and all of those sorts of things. So, you know, if I put all of these in, then we can make it look so much better. Oh, and I can I, so I should be able to enter Charles Charles at Charles at Charles dot com password secret confirm password more secret and press register Save that. No, no. The browser is very clever, isn't it? And the register hasn't done anything. Well, no. Register has loaded the page again with the new information. And the, the information got written in, or left written in, because... because the page contains a little bit of PHP that pre-fills the form if the user has filled in already filled it in already last time. Sorry, this bit is probably not terribly clear. Let me show what I mean. The end user fills in a page called register.php. When they do, that actually sends the data to the web server when they when they submit that page when they press the register button that sends the data to the server and at the moment the web server does nothing it reloads register.php the same page and in that page there are instructions to put in the data that the user has just entered back into the form the same form and send back the same form so you start with an empty form, you fill it in, you get back a full form. The same form as before, just full this time. That doesn't sound terribly interesting, does it? Uh, it's useful in one nice way, which is suppose that you start filling things in. Let's put in no password, you know. And you accidentally press register midway through the job. Register sends the page, reloads the page, and your pre-filled form, your unfinished job, appears there. It's a nice usability feature that is done by pre-filling the form in that way. What do we have to put in there? To start with, there's plenty of error catching code, and that's part of the things that I'm happy to do for later, like the pretty stuff. So it says here, if the method for filling in the form is post, well, the method for filling in the form is post, no problem. We'll have to remember to start PHP because there's a start of PHP code. 
connect require connect db yes i can see that we're going to need this let's do that open up php add php code here so i'll leave that here i think open up php and then php has to end somewhere let's end php at this point get the database connection because we're going to need that database connection copy that it's not bad stick it in right okay we've got our database connection then there's plenty of checking checking if the first name exists and get hold of it so I suppose you know this one is very much self-contained if there is a first name uh, no because it uses the errors array which I haven't created yet Shall we do the errors array now? Come on, come on, come on. Get an array that will be a list of errors if the end user forgets one thing or another. Then get the first name, the last name and the email using much the same technique. Check if there is a first name. If there isn't, complain if there is get it in same with last name same with email oh i suppose that would have to be last that's last and that is ln same with email and that's e and email oh i did not name that last name those three post first name post last name post email no in fact those six post first name first name post last name last name post email email they have to use the same names of item as in the form first name first underscore name last underscore name email in one word email email last name last name first name first name they're all named the same you see and if there was a discrepancy then the computer would lose track of which is which you know if i had a have the bad idea of putting e dash mail then suddenly email without the dash and email with the dash are not the same and the machine doesn't know which is which it doesn't recognize them so we've got uh, the information about the username the last name and the email then there is a checking of passwords in there to compare the first password to the second one and all of those sorts of things but I think at this point I'm going to be lazy and I'm going to do just this bit. There's plenty of if and so on. It's foolproof stuff to make sure has the user type to password. And if they have, have they typed to do password and are they the same? Yeah, well, I did not say anything about what my SQL I real escape string is. And it's another safety feature. Remember, we saw a safety feature with uh, SHA-1 with, uh, with the encrypting of the password. And this one is 
if someone types in data in the form that contains some special characters, at one time there was a trick that people used called SQL injection. Oh, there's a very funny SQL injection. SQL injection is a hacking technique that had been widely in use at the beginning of the of the web, doesn't work so often now, uh, and it consists in just typing in what would be code instead of typing in actual names of people or proper information in a form and then submitting that. Surely my computer can load XKCD? Huh, good. As in, you know, we're typing we we go in a form online and we type Robert close a quote close a bracket drop table now if I type this in a form and that information is added to an SQL query you could well end up running drop table students into somebody's database well if it's a school You've lo we've lost this year's student's records. I hope you're happy. <laughs> so the purpose of the instruction you were reading here is to sanitize the database input. Eh? You know, the information that is input by the user is first run through something that says real escape string, which actually checks for special characters and as we call call it escapes them makes sure that they cannot cause a problem in code oh, and trim removes the space before and after something so often people accidentally type in type in a space after a, after a word for example but uh, space at the beginning of the end of words uh, we don't want them, so we trim the data entered by the user, then escape it. Finally, we've got a password. Again, okay, next thing checks if there are no errors, and if there are no errors, it checks for the repeat in the email address. But again, I'm going to skip this thing because it's error checking and I want to get straight to this. If there are no errors, run this query. And if the query has run, say you are registered. I assume if the query does not run, we will have, oh, there's a bracket that I must not forget here, I suppose. We'll check for brackets. So there's our query. We've collected the email, a password and everything, and we run this based uh, on all of the data we've connected. Run the query that we have made using the connection. And if the query has worked out, so if our, if there is a result, yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to call that result. If there is a result, then echo registered and I suppose I could say else open a curly bracket echo oopsie close the, close the curly bracket are there things to finish off? I think that is it. I'm just checking out, especially for opening brackets at the beginning of the code and at the end. When we change things, and we do, it's very easy to forget. For example, here, there is a curly bracket. Uh, this one here is the end of this so there are there are brackets to watch out for which one closes and which one opens finally close the connection to the database at one time it used to be very important to do this but uh, php pages are now set up to avoid those sorts of things and here at the end there's an if there's no error that we have 
Yeah, and there's our, our close the database and the finishing curly brackets and that kind of a, uh, and, and, and that kind of things. But we have already got the right count of brackets correct. Save that. All right, so I've not copied the whole tutorial. I skipped quite a bit of the error checking and that kind of things and all of the things that would make the page look good. But fingers crossed, yes, goodbye, Tommy Tables. Fingers crossed, we should be able to actually run a registration. Let's see. And now, because it doesn't do any che error checking, I better type things correctly. Charles Boisvert, Charles at here, charles.com, that will do. Use a secure password. No, secret, secret. It's not a password to anything at the moment anyway, so even if it did get hacked, well, remember things. Warning, it says, no such file or directory, PHP challenge. Register online 10. Failed opening con includes connect db.php. Wait, 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 wait. What have I failed to do there? I bet there's a typo in some file name or some stupid thing like that. Let's see. Includes, there's connect, includes, that was line, that was la, la line 10. What have I done? Have I mistyped the include without an S and I call that includes. Always the stupidest mistakes that surprise us most. Right, okay, let's step back. Try doing this again. So, yeah, password. I'll type in my password again. My favorite secret password. And press register and drum roll. And then press register and hoping for the best. You are now registered. Yes! Oh, and there is a login thing, but the login isn't done. Right, it's terribly ugly, isn't it? Also, what happens if I register a new user? So let's say Charlie, same thing, uh, at uh, with an address which will be charlie at charles.com. And then this time, instead, I will forget the password. And I want to see what kind of thing happens when this goes wrong, especially as I haven't actually um, put in all of the error checking. Press register. And at least it should say oopsie. Yes, okay, it has said oopsie. Right, so I think what has happened this time is that, okay, it connected, it picked up all of the data and so on. It made a query this query and then at the time of running the query because there was no password the insert into users etc the password bit here was empty and as there's no password the database actually rejected it if you look back at how we set up the database table, we actually did say that the uh, the columns must not have null values in them. Pass char 40, not null. So I did not insert a password. I'm not trying to insert data in the database with no password. It's caught by this, and we're getting an error at the SQL level. Let's see, I submitted my data without a password. The server picked it up, made a query, sent that to SQL. SQL ran, the data did not get inserted. It confirmed the error and the computer, uh, the, the server then picked up that error and returned something that said, oopsie. Let's do one last check that this has worked out. If I look into my database, I should actually see my new user. Databases. And 
yeah, uh, know which one is it. PHP challenge. One table. Yeah, they show us the table. Users. Click on that. Okay, I had made a ch test user total. And here I got a user Charles Boisvert. Aha, and that one got entered as well. So that error checking would actually be important. They, even though there was no password, SHA-1 has actually encrypted things in such a way that a password got inserted anyway, or a, uh, a code equivalent to empty string is apparently this in SHA-1. Okay, fair enough. That sounds like nice encryption. I wouldn't want to have to decrypt this. And so my uh, my fake user or my, my wrong user has been entered in, uh, in here. Okay, where do we go from here? First of all, there's all the things that would make it look good that aren't done. Uh, but they are written quite clearly in there. And now we've got it working at a basic level we can actually add uh, the bootstrap, add the better, uh, the, the better presentation, add the error checking that have been skipping and so on. And also, how would login work? Well, let's see. A user types in their username and their password. That information gets submitted to the web server. The web server picks up the username and a password, check that none have been forgotten, sends an SQL query to select the information about users with the correct, with that username and that password. If the username and password are correct, and the SHA-1 of the password, if the username and SHA-1 of the password are correct, then it will come back saying, I have found one row in the table that has the same username and the same password as this user. If not, then the computer will come back saying, I've found no rows in the table. At this point, if there's one row in the table, then the user is logged in. We say, hello, welcome. We have information for you. And if there's no row in the table, then they mistook their username and the password, and we say, sorry, try again, or sorry, go away. So a basic structure is in place. A lot of things that rely on databases rely on this whole process. User fills in form, form turns into query, query goes to database, database returns data. Sometimes the user doesn't fill the form. Instead, they, they click on an option. The option corresponds to a hidden data in a form, etc. Or else the option provokes a request to the server that looks like data in a form, etc. That's it. Challenge complete. For fun, I think I'm going to press one last time on the uh, on this thing and see if I can register something or somebody else. Did you know Toto had a best friend? I press register and I hope for the best. And let's check that they did get registered by just rerunning this query. One, two, three, yes, there we are. One, two, three, five, it says. There appears to be a four that might have been because of some error that caused it to attempt to register a user number four that then disappeared. But our registration is working. Our basic structure is working. Thank you. Goodbye.